So, this way of writing the problem as I said is not this is not well posed here, this is not well posed. So, because this is not well posed, the right the, uh, the right way of posing the problem is that we are not looking for actions u 0 to u n minus 1, but rather functions. we are looking for functions and now let me denote these functions in the following way 0 mu 0 to mu n minus 1 right. So, mu 0 to mu n minus 1 such that the amount of stock to be ordered at to be ordered at time k which is u k is equal to then mu k of x k for all values of x k. So, whatever be the value of of whatever be the value of the of the stock available at the beginning of the time period you will be, uh, uh, you will be able to find u k as a function of that once you know mu k. So, what we are looking for are these functions ok these functions mu 0 to mu n minus 1 and as a uh, and these functions would then once once these functions are fully specified what they let you do is pick your action which is the amount of stock to be ordered as a function of the information that would be present. So, therefore, the problem the, the correct way of posing the problem the correct way of posing the problem is that you want to minimize the expected cost it includes the terminal cost plus all these running costs starting from 0 to n minus 1 r of x k plus c of u k and you want to minimize this by choosing mu 0 to mu n minus 1 these functions. So, mathematically this is what is being done you are you are getting you are you are trying to optimize this particular cost function now by choosing a sequence of functions ok. Now, the reason we needed to do this was because demand itself is something that was going to be realized in the future all right and it was not known its value was not known to us. So, we had to essentially plan for every possible value and which and when you are planning for every possible value what we are effectively doing is finding this these the sequence of such functions right. Now, there would be another case suppose in which someone told you what the exact demand is going to be ok hypothetically say suppose someone gave you the exact value of the demand in which case this the expectation here would be more the expectation in this uh, that I have written here would have uh, would be would be uh, would be moot and then what you would you would know the exact value of the information or the exact value of the amount of stock that would be uh, that would be present at the beginning of each time period. In that case in that case you can actually plan to for uh, for taking a particular action because you know the exact state right. So, there are no you do not need to plan for every possible state you can simply try to find the value of each uh, the action for the particular state that is going to be realized 
all right for the or the particular value stock level that is going to be realized that's that space that kind of case where the where the demand is known would be the case where the noise is deterministic so it's really not noise anymore the demand is deterministic it is known in advance its value is known in advance and all you are doing is planning for for specific uh, events that are going to happen in the future specific known events that are going to happen in the future that's a much easier version of this particular problem but the more general pro version of the problem is involves taking these uh, taking these de uh, these decisions without knowing what the information is going to be right so this mu 0 to mu n minus 1 that that i have written here this is what's called a policy okay and it's often denoted by pi okay it's So, the uh, the distinction here that I have well, let me mention one more uh, point here the distinction between what is called what uh, what I have been saying as as taking a particular action which is the amount of stock to be ordered versus planning for every possible uh, po possible level of uh, level of stock. The distinction between these two is the distinction between what what we call in stochastic control and in games as the distinction between actions and strategy what we have effectively done is because we we do not know the information that's going to be uh, realized in uh, in the future we are not commit commit committing or deciding on what particular action is to be taken rather what we are doing is we are coming up with a strategy a strategy which says that you know if i had this information this is what i would do if i have that information that's what i would do right so this here these functions mu 0 to mu n minus 1 they to or your policy effectively constitutes decide doing what is called strategy it involves coming up with these plans whereas u 0 to u k minus 1 these which are the uh, actual decisions you are going to take these constitute actions. Right. So, our problem therefore, is to come up with uh, is to come up with these the, uh, these strategies or these policies right. Now, the uh, every time a problem involves noise it whether you uh, whether however simple or complex the problem uh, the the noise may be the problem shifts from the space of actions to the space of strategies because the no we do not know the value of value of the noise in advance it uh, it means that the action you cannot plan for any specific actions. So, pr problem in of of choosing actions is simply a problem of choosing these vectors right. So, sorry this is not k minus 1 this should be n minus 1 the problem of choosing these actions is simply a problem of choosing these n vectors u 0 to u n minus 1 all right and I can stack them up and essentially think of this as one composite uh, decision problem involving a, a one long vector right so u0 to un minus 1 however this problem here the problem above is not a problem of choosing vectors it's a problem of choosing functions so the space of the problem itself has changed the pro the problem of choosing actions which is the problem that you would have if um, if say the w's were deterministic that problem in is a problem of simply the problem of vector optimization whereas this problem here is a problem of of optimization over functions right it's a problem of finding the right function sequence of functions not just a sequence of vectors okay. so this distinction is uh, is actually what makes this dynamic programming or dynamic optimization significantly harder than than uh, than static optimization ok. Now, the r r may r as as I go a little further uh, uh, further I will explain to you how we can actually reduce somehow this problem which is involves trying to decide these n functions 
to a setting to somehow a setting where we have to decide only actions okay so uh, actions but actions uh, and we and from there from those actions somehow deduce what the function should be so all of that will happen in a uh, subsequently as we go further down in this course okay so now to uh, to summarize what uh, what we've said in this example let me let me uh, write for you uh, a, a uh, the a general a general dynamic optimization problem or a general dynamic programming problem uh, and its main constituents okay so the main constituents of a dynamic programming problem involve uh, involve first a a state the first component is the state of the system okay so the state of the system simply is your xk in in this case which was the inventory level so this okay so it's it will be denoted by xk it was in the previous problem it was the inventory level it captures it is it is whatever is needed it is whatever is needed to capture the configuration of the system it is some description that we have of the configuration of the of this of the system that we are that we are dealing with in this case since the uh, system we were in the in the example we saw the system we were dealing with was the inventory in a in a shop so the, it was enough for us to keep track of just simply the amount of inventory present at the beginning of the time period right so in the, uh, so as a result of this the uh, the uh, the that we took that as the state of the system now the state of the system is a part of problem modeling uh, what we exactly want to define as the state it's a it's a bit of uh, there are usually more than one way of defining the state but try to always keep the state as simple as possible for instance in the previous problem we could have because we were talking of inventory at uh, and trying to decide the stock over over these n time periods we could have taken the state as the entire history of of um, uh, you know the stock levels up till time k now that entire history could be taken but it has no bearing on trying to decide uh, it doesn't help in in you know in trying to decide what we are what we are actually uh, lo uh, looking for which is the amount of stock that is to be ordered because that that the amount of for in order to decide what the stock that we have to order it's enough to simply know what the level of the stock is at the latest time period not and the entire history is actually not relevant for that so as a result we have picked a parsimonious definition of the state we have taken the state as simply the uh, the uh, the current uh, the the level of stock at the current time period okay so now the state itself state evolution or dynamics now the state itself evolves based on the action that you would take and the noise that that comes up in the system so the, the way we express this is that we write xk plus 1 as some fk of xk comma uk comma wk right so here this is the action at time period k this here is the noise uh, this is the noise at time period k all right and so as a function of the action that you plan to take at time period k and the noise that evolves at that uh, time period k and the previous and the state at time period k you get the next state okay uh, the state at the next time period 
right. Now, because this w k is random, this sequence will be random, all right. So, the sequence of states will be random, it is not something whose value you would know at the beginning of the time, uh, at the beginning of the problem, ok. And uh, so, as a, as a result, the actions that you would end up taking would also be random, because they would be as, would be chosen as a function of the of the information that you have okay the so this here is these are uh, this is wk is is noise usually we take wk is as independent random variables in many cases also identically distributed or zero mean and so on, but that depends on the problem. But usually, we take these as independent independent random variables all right and, and they are uh, they are independent of each other and they will they their distribution cannot be decided uh, you know as a function of as a function of uh, using through your actions ok. Now, there would usually be a control constraint, a constraint on actions. So, that constraint on actions is, uh, is um, in this, in our case was, uh, uh, in our case was say u k greater than equal to 0. So, for example, that was our constraint, but more generally it could be any constraint and moreover that constraint could depend also on the state that you are in. Say for example, it could be something as something like this u k belongs to capital u k of x k ok. This would be the most general way of writing the constraint. So, as a function of the state x k that you are in the the, uh, the kind of con the, the, uh, the actions that you can potentially take have to be in this set capital U k of x k ok. All right. And the additive cost form the cost we would the cost form is denoted in this sort of way. Here is your terminal cost g n of x n. Remember we are taking actions at starting at time 0 till time n minus 1. The problem ends at time n. So, at time n whatever is the state based on that you incur a terminal cost g n of x n. We are not taking any further actions at time n. So, although I am saying I have said that we take actions at n time instants the end time instance themselves are denoted 0 to n minus 1 all right. So, this is so the entire cost is therefore, g n of x n which is your terminal cost plus g k of x k u k. Sometimes we can we also include w k here, but it does not matter the k u it can uh, this this inclusion here is optional it is you can simply write g k comma u k that is also a gen, uh, uh, without loss of generality all right. So, as you can see we are uh, in our uh, in the earlier pro in the problem above g n of x n was this was simply r of x n and uh, g k of x k u k w k this was r of x k plus c of u k ok all right. Now ok. So, having formulated this uh, the basic problem then our the the our goal becomes the following that we would like to decide we would like to decide a uh, policy. So, we would like to decide a pi which is denoted by mu 0 to mu n minus 1 above we what we would a policy mu 0 to mu n minus 1 such that uh, it would map 
the 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 state to control actions or to actions that you want to take okay so uk would be equal to mu k of xk for all for all values of xk for all values of k right uh, and now moreover this kind now the, what kind of policies are admissible now remember since we mentioned we have control we have constraints here on control actions that control actions needed uh, have to satisfy this particular constraint the kind of policies that are admissible are an admissible policy is only one where an admissible policy is one which is uh, in which uk or uh, in which uh, mu k of x k always belongs to u of u capital u k of x k. So, this is true for all k, k comma and all k. So, this so an admissible policy is one which satisfies the constraints the control constraints that we have. So, now given the given uh, so how does the problem begin the problem begins with an initial state. So, you are given an initial state ok the which is say the inventory level at at the at the start uh, at the start of the um, of the time horizon say an initial state you given that initial state you would then uh, uh, and given the initial given the uh, given the a choice of a policy given an initial state and a policy mu 0 to mu n minus 1 uh, given the initial state and a policy what what how does the how does this system be, behave well it takes the initial state uses the policy at at uh, at at time 0 to to decide the action to be taken at time 0 right so it takes the policy at time 0 to decide the action to be taken at time uh, time 0 which is that would be u0 u0 then feeds into the state dynamics and what we get from there is 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 that you get the state at time 1 so you get more generally xk plus 1 at time k uh, a time xk plus 1 uh, emerges as a function fk of xk and uk where uk itself is just simply mu k of xk right and the noise wk right so because you are choosing now the action as a function of the state okay because uk itself is being chosen as a function as a function of the state you can now substitute this here and what you find is that the next the next state comes up is 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 defined through the dynamics and the policy that you have chosen that which is which is mu k right so after this substitution essentially what i what one can do is you can uh, you you can do this substitution not, uh, everywhere uh, in fact you can you can do this substitution um, even in the cost function if your cost function was gn of uh, gn of xn plus so gn of xn plus gk of uk wk so i have replaced the uk there by by simply the by simply mu k of xk right so as as you can see the cost function now depends uh, depends on two things so this depends on depends on pi which is your policy and depends also on the initial state okay it depends on where you are starting because 
after all the state evolution that you that your system would see would now get determined by the dynamics and the policy that has been stated. So, once I fix my initial state which is the st state where I am starting from and the kind of policy that I have chosen the noise distribution is what will determine the de evolution of your of the state sequence ok. And so, what we have therefore, is the expected cost of the associate of uh, evaluated over this this particular noise sequence and that depends as you can see on pi as, as well as x 0. So, we denote this we denote this therefore, by j subscript pi of x 0. So, this is therefore, this is what is this quantity? This is the cost incurred by policy pi starting from state starting from state x 0 this that is what this would be. So, what is therefore, the problem the problem then uh, one uh, uh, the, 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 the problem that we have that we uh, we want to solve then is to find policy pi star in say a space capital pi now what this capital pi here is the set of admissible policies admissible set of admissible policies sorry j pi star such so find a pi star which is in the set of admissible policies such that the cost of the uh, the, uh, the cost that you incurred by pi star is the least amongst the cost of all policies in the set of admissible policies okay now the cost uh, 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 the notice that this is you it appears like the this particular problem is actually a problem that we would now need to solve for each value of x 0 because we have not uh, gotten rid of the initial state as yet. So, we would have a cost for each initial state and it it appears uh, prima facie that the pi star which is the optimal policy would vary could vary with x 0 because I have just fixed one x 0 and found a pi star. However, the, the nature of the problem is such that it turns out that you know this this it is typically possible to find a pi star that does not depend on x 0 itself. So, so you, you can choose any token x 0 to start with and the policy that you would find um, uh, you, you end up finding a policy that would work for any initial state. Uh, so, that is how that is how it often uh, uh, often happens it is because the policy itself is something that is a plan for every possible state. So, it does not really it is not it is not merely for this any the specific uh, state that you are looking for it you usually get the policy for every possible initial any every possible initial state. So, this this particular quantity which is um, uh, the the uh, j pi star this is also denoted by j star of x 0 this sometimes denoted by j star of x 0 that is simply another way of writing the cost of the optimal policy. This has a name it is what is called the optimal value function 
optimal value function. So, the optimal value function is simply a function that tells you what the optimal value of the op of the dynamic optimization is going to be as a function of the initial state. Okay. This is called the optimal value function or optimal cost function. Okay. This optimal cost as a function of initial state. Okay. So, this is uh, so what we will now uh, what we will do in the next class is find ways of of computing this particular the the optimal value uh, the or the optimal value function. Okay. So, so I will pause here and we will resume again in the next class.